Hello everybody, I'm Gavin McCormack here and this is my good friend Jocelyn. Say hello Jocelyn. Hi. Jocelyn is a biologist and a botanist, which is very special. We'll come to that in just a second. Now we're here in Spitsbergen, which is an island in the north of Svalbard. As you know, we're in the Arctic Circle this week, teaching you all about plants. And we're very lucky that we have a specialist in plants with us right here today. Now right behind me, you can see a series of cliffs. Those cliffs are igneous rock, ancient rocks, millions and millions of years old. And on those rocks, you will see grass, lichens, and moss, which is very exciting. But the question is, what is actually happening right behind us? Now, Jocelyn is gonna answer those questions for us, for me, and for you. So my first question to you, Jocelyn, is this. This is a very cold part of the world. It can become minus 20 here at some times. So how do these plants survive in such cold conditions? Well, they do a lot of different things. Uh, it is difficult because of the uh, cold um, and the wind and exposure. Uh, so a lot of things they do is just grow really close to the ground. But here in particular, uh, it's a special condition. There's not a lot of nutrients in the soil. There's a lot of mineral, just basic bare rock um, and not a lot of food really for the plants. But here, growing underneath the bird cliffs with all the bird poo, um, getting draining down into the vegetation, that's where these plants are getting their nutrition. I was, going, I was going to say something about that. I mean, I've seen around this area, there's lots of green patches between rock. I mean, why is it just spots of green? That's it. So you could look at any bare face here, and if you see a bright patch of green, you can bet that there's a bird cliff above it. So the birds are all nesting above it. When they poo, that all drains down the cliff into all of the rocks in the soil below it. And then that's where the extra nutrition comes so the plants can grow even easier. It's basically like fertilizer. That's exactly right. Wow, amazing. Now, I guess the second question that I've got for you is that, you know, I've been here for a week and I haven't seen one single tree. You know, why is that? <laughs> Actually, the forest is all around us. It's just really small, so it's hard to notice. Oh. Yeah, so here, most of the ground is frozen, so uh, which it's permafrost. Um, so there's a very shallow active layer where roots can grow and where there can be biological activity, um, and the roots of a tree can't penetrate deep enough. Um, so that's the main reason why there aren't tall trees. But we do have a plant species, a willow, um, and that is the Svalbard tree or forest, but it's only a centimeter tall and it puts its woody little um, branches through the moss for a protective layer. So the moss keeps it nice and cozy and warm and um, protected from the wind. And the leaves basically and the flowers stick up from the ground maybe a centimeter or two. It's like as big as your pinky nail are the leaves. Wow, a forest that's one centimeter tall, that's amazing. Now, I guess the biggest question that I've got for you is how important are these plants? I mean, plants are all around us in the environment. We have them in our gardens, we have them in the forest, we have them in the fields. How important are these plants in terms of uh, conserving and preserving the whole ecosystem. I mean, today we saw a polar bear. We saw a polar bear. We saw an Arctic fox. I mean, what would happen if these plants were not here? Well, on land, the reindeer, um, they eat the lichens, the grasses, the mosses. So that, those plants are super important for the reindeer. They wouldn't exist here. Um, this is a little off topic. It's going to blow your mind, but the marine plants, there are plants that live underneath the sea ice and all of that algae actually is super important. If the algae wasn't there, polar bears wouldn't be there. Everything else depends on that algae. And so the polar bears depend on that algae too. So plants are the bottom of the whole system, whether they're on land or whether they're actually in the ocean growing as algae or kelp or seaweed. Wow, amazing. Now, Jocelyn is a scientist and a botanist and it's something really amazing, I think, because we don't often see lots of women going into science. I mean, how important do you think it is that we have a mix of genders going into the area of science, biology, physics, chemistry, and, and you know, what got you into it? What made you make that decision? Oh, well, I mean, of course it's important to have women in science. It's important to have everybody in science. Uh, and we all bring different perspectives, absolutely. So as far as a gender thing, um, women bring different perspectives and awareness um, in our lives. So that's value in and of itself. And what got you into science? You know, I didn't pick it in particular. I thought I was going to be a writer um, and a travel writer, maybe, or researching different cultures. Uh, but I was able to do some studies, uh, field studies outside and being in the forest and seeing animals behave in their natural places. Uh, and all I decided, I just wanted to be outside. And so that was pretty much it. So I just followed my nose and here I am as a biologist and a scientist working outside. Well, uh, and I love it. We're certainly outside now in the Arctic Circle. 
Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Now this week, what we'd like you to do is have a look at, do the research around the Arctic Circle and all the habitats, the biomes, and the plant uh, life in that area. And we want you to then go into your local environment, pick a plant, pick a plant that you find interesting, research it, and then what we want you to do is have a look what would happen to the ecosystem around your community if that plant was missing. As we heard from Jocelyn today, if these plants behind us were not here, and the plants under the ocean too, there would be no polar bears. So it's very, very important. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thanks.